Today, I'm going to explain the double entry system of debits and credits that serves as the lifeblood of financial accounting. In order to understand this system, we first have to grasp a concept called the accounting equation. And I know what you're thinking. Seriously, math, E2 accounting? But trust me, this is like second grade stuff, third grade stuff maybe, so just bear with me. The accounting equation lays out on a high level what a company is made of. It states that a company's assets must equal its liabilities plus its shareholders' equity. This equation must be balanced for every company at all times. A company is made up of assets. Assets are what the company uses to generate and store value. An asset is anything that the company controls, that was acquired through a past transaction, and that will create future value for the company such as land, equipment, cash, and inventory. These assets are financed by a combination of money contributed by the owners of the company and debt. That is, everything the company owns is financed through a mix of debt and shareholders' equity. Debt is what the company has borrowed from third-party lenders, like banks or suppliers. Debt is an obligation to repay someone, which arises from a past transaction. Shareholders' equity is what belongs to the company's owners, it is money that the owners themselves invested, or earned in the process of the company's operations. For a company to own assets, it must either borrow from others, or use the capital of its owners. For example, a startup's first big purchase may be an office space, which is made possible because its founders contributed money to start the company. In the future, when the startup wants to expand, it may have to take out a loan from the bank, and use this money to purchase a new factory. Thus, the value in our assets account must equal the combined value of liabilities, or debt, and shareholders' equity. But a company's assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity are not fixed. In fact, most of the company's business activities will have some sort of effect on this equation. If the company buys a new machine, it's increasing its assets. If it takes out a loan from the bank, it's increasing its liabilities. And if it sells shares in the stock market, then it's increasing its shareholders' equity. While this equation may change, it always remains in balance. So no matter what happens in a company, its assets will continue to equal its liabilities plus its shareholders' equity. So when the company buys that new machine, it's increasing its assets in the form of the new machine, but it's also decreasing its assets in the form of cash paid out for the machine, causing the equation to stay balanced. After all, if we start with the equation 0 equals 0 plus 0, and we add 7 to the right side, and then subtract 7 from the right side, we end up with an equation that's still balanced. And when the company borrows money from a bank, its liabilities increase, but its assets increase by the same amount, because they're receiving cash in exchange for the loan. So if we again start with an equation that reads 0 equals 0 plus 0, and add 7 to the right side, and 7 to the left side, we'll end up with an equation that remains in balance. So how do we record these changes in our accounts? Calling them increases and decreases, or positives and negatives, won't cut it, since in the last example, our liabilities increased, but so did our assets. And two plus sevens don't balance out. So instead, we use something called debits and credits. We record an increase to our assets as a debit. So if cash increases by $7, we would debit the cash account for $7 and we credit anything that has the opposite effect of an increase in our assets. What would have an opposite effect to an increase in our assets? Well, one example is a decrease in our assets. We record decreases to our assets as a credit. Just like in our 0 equals 0 plus 0 example, decreasing the left-hand side by 7 has the opposite effect of increasing it by 7. Another example of an opposite effect would be if we increased the right-hand side of our equation. We would also record this as a credit. Decreasing our assets, or increasing our liabilities and shareholders' equity, have the same effect, since subtracting 7 from the left-hand side of an equation is equivalent to adding 7 to the right-hand side of the equation. In both cases, this is the opposite to an increase in our assets, so we record it as a credit instead of a debit. A company has many different accounts within assets, liabilities, and shareholders' equity. For instance, shareholders' equity can be further broken down into retained earnings and contributed capital. Contributed capital is money that the founders, investors, and eventually other shareholders contribute by buying shares. 
And retained earnings is all the value the company has earned and accumulated over the years through its net income, which is its revenues minus any expenses. This value can eventually be paid out or distributed to the company's shareholders in the form of dividends. So an expanded version of our accounting equation would look like this. Assets equal liabilities plus contributed capital plus revenues minus expenses minus dividends. So which accounts do we debit and which do we credit? The good news is you don't have to memorize a long list of accounts and remember which ones to debit and which ones to credit. We can just tie everything back to our accounting equation. When we increase our assets, the left-hand side of our equation increases. So increases to any of our asset accounts are recorded as debits, and any decreases are recorded as credits. When we increase our liability or shareholders equity accounts, the right-hand side of our equation increases. So increases to any of these accounts are recorded as credits, and decreases to any of these accounts are recorded as debits. Here's one catch. Increases to expenses and dividends are recorded as debits, even though these accounts belong in shareholders' equity, on the right-hand side of the equation. So why is that? At first, this might seem like a contradiction, or an exception to the rule, but it really isn't. Because expenses reduce the value of our retained earnings. The more expenses we have, the lower our net income will be, and therefore the lower our retained earnings will be. So actually, expenses decrease our retained earnings and the value of the right-hand side of our equation overall. Decreases to the right-hand side of the equation are recorded as debits. The same goes for dividend payments. Dividends are paid out of our retained earnings, and so an increase to our dividends actually decreases the value of our retained earnings account. So this should be recorded as a debit. With dividends, the company is distributing earnings to shareholders and no longer has these earnings for itself. So shareholders' equity falls, and so does the entire right-hand side of the equation. So we record an increase in our dividends as a debit. This debit rule is often referred to as the dead rule. Debit, expenses, assets, and dividends. This rule holds because of a more universal rule. Debit increases to the left-hand side of the equation, and credit increases to the right-hand side of the equation. The accounting equation must always remain in balance, so we must make sure we record an equal amount of debits and credits. When we record the debits and credits resulting from an economic event, we're making what's called a journal entry. For example, if I borrow $1,000 from the bank, my assets, cash, increased, but so did my liabilities, notes payable. I would record a journal entry debiting cash for $1,000 and crediting notes payable for $1,000. The debits in this entry equal the credits, and so the accounting equation correctly remains in balance. So to recap, a company's assets equals its liabilities plus shareholders' equity. We debit increases to the asset side, and credit increases to the liabilities and shareholders' equity side through journal entries. These journal entries must have an equal amount of debits and credits to make sure that our accounting equation remains in balance. This system of recording debits and credits to our accounting equation is known as double entry accounting. As Mark Ruffalo once said, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. I hope this helped you understand why accountants bother using debits and credits in their journal entries. Click the link in the description to watch part two of this video where we walk through an example of debits and credits in action. Thanks for watching. The accounting equation lays out on a high level what what